So the last category of operations or tools that I want to talk about within the core GIS toolkit are the geoprocessing operations and basic geoprocessing tools. And these tools are an incredibly important part of the Vector GIS toolkit. And in many ways, you might even say that they are the core of the core of the toolkit. I am a bit old school about what I consider to be a geoprocessing tool. Sometimes when you talk to people, you will, uh, in, they will say that uh, geoprocessing tools are a bit more encompassing than the way I'm going to be using the term here. And that's fine, but I do want to give you a definition of exactly what a geoprocessing tool means to me and the way that we'll be using the term in this course. So a geoprocessing tool is one that systematically manipulates the geometry or the attribute information of a vector GIS file. It does this in some way. Let me say that again. A geoprocessing tool is one that systematically manipulates either the geometry or the attribute information or both of a vector GIS data file. And it is often the case that when people think about geoprocessing, the first thing that comes to mind is the manipulation of the geometry. And we do use them for that a lot. Uh, but it's also important to remember that A, the manipulations that we do can be based on attribute information. And uh, moreover, even when you're manipulating the geometry in a systematic way, it is simultaneously manipulating the attribute table in some way as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. It does have to do with both. Geoprocessing tools do both. So depending on exactly how you want to count, there could be quite a few geoprocessing tools uh, because there are uh, many different ways that we could go about making this systematic manipulation of geometry and attributes and vector data. But it is a finite list. There is a finite number of uh, ways that which we could do this. But uh, nonetheless, it's probably a, a fairly sizable list and we don't have time to cover all of them in this course, and I don't include all of them in the core vector GIS toolkit anyway. I just use a subset here. So we're going to talk about what I call the basic six, or what is considered uh, by many people to be the basic six geoprocessing tools, uh, and I include them in this basic toolkit. Uh, I, I may give you a bonus seventh at the end, uh, but uh, we're going to be talking about this basic six and look at them uh, in detail from both a theoretical point and from an applied point in a software package. So if you do happen to be using the ArcGIS software platform, I know not all of you are, but if you are using the ArcGIS software platform, you're going to find that it's very easy to access all six of these basic geoprocessing tools. If you take a look in ArcGIS, you're going to find along the top of the menu bar, there's going to be a uh, option for geoprocessing. You click on it and you get this drop down a menu uh, that's going to show the basic six geoprocessing tools. It won't have that bonus seventh on there, but it does have the core six or the basic six. And each one of these tools that you can access in this way uh, systematically manipulates the attribute tables and the geometry of vector data. So once you've learned all six of these uh, geoprocessing tools, then what you can do is you can begin integrating them into your workflow for solving problems and answering questions in GIS. Uh, when you combine these six geoprocessing tools with the techniques that we've already learned, such as selection by attribute, selection by location, and so forth, you really end up with a tremendous amount of power for solving geographic questions, for answering geographic problems, um, even though it's a very limited set of, uh, set of tools that we can cover, we can understand uh, each one of them thoroughly, but you get a tremendous amount of power, and so that's very exciting. So what are the basic six uh, geoprocessing tools? Let me go ahead and list them here, but then I'll go over each one of them in more detail. Okay, so they are buffer, intersect, union, clip, merge, and dissolve. I'll say them again. That's buffer, intersect, union, clip, merge and dissolve. And what's very important to understand about each one of these tools is that they are abstract. Okay, each one of them does this manipulation and it does it in a very abstract way. The systematic manipulation very abstractly. So we've got to understand these tools in a few different ways. Uh, we've got to understand them on a theoretical level. We've got to understand what each one of them does 
abstractly and how it's going to manipulate the data when we use it. So uh, if you want to be effective with these tools, you have to understand on this abstract level what's going on with the geometry and the attribute information. Uh, but then we've got to apply it in some way. You're going to have to make a step, and we're going to talk about this as we go over each one of these tools. The step that we want to make is to not only just understand these tools theoretically, because I don't want to manipulate geometry or attribute tables just for the sake of manipulating geometry and attribute tables in a GIS. I want to be able to use them to solve some kind of problem or answer some kind of question. So what you're going to have to do uh, is take a look at these tools and then think about how would you use that or when would you need to use that tool? How would you apply it in a specific circumstance in the domain level, in the domain that you're interested in, whatever it is, the subject area that you work in, when is a situation when that kind of manipulation of geometry and attributes would be exactly what you need? So we want to, to think about that. Uh, that jump is extremely important to make, to go from, yes, I understand this abstractly, I understand this theoretically, but I also know how to apply it uh, in an in a, uh, application circumstance. That's very important. Let me give you two final points about these tools before we get started. And the first is that I highly recommend that you become very familiar with the help files about all of these tools in whatever GIS software package that you're working in. Um, it's very important that you understand exactly how each one of these tools work inside the software package that you're working in. Um, you want to know exactly what any t tool, any operation, whether it's geoprocessing or not, but uh, you really want to understand exactly how the computer system, the software package that you've got, the specific one you're using, is manipulating the data when you run the operation. This is, of course, especially important for scientific purposes. You have to know uh, what is happening to your data. There can't be any surprises about, uh, oh, I didn't know that I was doing that to the data set when you're trying to do some kind of uh, analysis. So uh, whenever you're using a software package, you want to get very familiar with your uh, help files. A lot of software packages provide a lot of documentation, as they should, about exactly how the tools work and how they're implemented inside a specific software package. So even though here in this uh, lecture series, video series, we're going to be talking about these tools in a rather abstract way, uh, even if I wanted to get into the specific details of specific software packages, I wouldn't have time. There's a lot to talk about. And plus, we've got so many different software packages anyway that my first recommendation to you after learning the theory of these tools is to really take a look at how they're implemented inside your software package. The help files and different software packages are really going to be your friend. So definitely uh, learn to use those, learn to access those. Uh, second, it's important to note that these geoprocessing operations are not designed to alter any of the original data. Okay, When you input data into a geoprocessing tool, it's not going to be altering that original data set. And this is very significant because I find that sometimes students are afraid to experiment and play around with the geoprocessing tools because they're afraid they're going to mess up the data in some way and then they're not going to be able to get it back uh, and they're not going to be able to fix it. Don't worry about that. That's not true. Uh, the original data that you input into any of these tools stays exactly like it is. It doesn't alter that data in any way. Each one of these operations is going to return to you an entirely new vector data file that has the results uh, of the manipulation of the geometry and the attribute table. So you get to keep your original data exactly as it is and you get a new file. So please feel free to experiment with them and uh, play around with them. You're not going to be altering your original data. All right, well, I guess that's it for our introductory information on the geoprocessing tools. We'll begin to look at each one of them in detail beginning in the next video.